Being an airplane pilot is no easy feat. It takes hours and hours of time and energy and hard work to earn your wings. There's plenty that could go wrong that pilots have never prepared for. Whether it's bad weather, bird strikes, or tough turbulence, pilots always need to bring their A-game while up in the air. And then there's sticking the landing, which can sometimes be pretty precarious. So put your tray tables to the upright position and join us as we take a look at 15 dangerous plane landings. Number 15. Lukla Airport, Nepal If you are the adventurous type and looking to push things to the vertical limit, then there's no doubt you'll be flying into Lukla Airport in Nepal to scale the treacherous Mount Everest. But despite being an everyday occurrence, landing a plane there is not an easy thing to do. First off, the runway is positioned right between the mountains and is very, very short to boot. You have to hit it perfectly and at just the right speed. There's really no margin for error here at Lukla Airport. And because the airport is up in the mountains, no plane is going to make a descent at the end of the flight. On the contrary, they're going to have to ascend if they want to stick that landing at Lukla. The pilot of the aircraft needs to be in constant communication with air traffic control here, but the power does have a tendency to go out up in the mountains due to the elevation, weather, and generally freezing temperatures that don't play well with electronic equipment. So if this is your first professional outing as a commercial pilot, maybe it's best to work your way up to a landing at Lukla Airport if you're planning on having a long career. Number 14. Tocantin Airport If you're ever flying into Honduras by way of the Tocantin Airport, you may want to have a few drinks and a big sleeping pill before the plane starts to land. That's because Tocantin Airport is sitting right next to the mountains and has an incredibly narrow runway guaranteed to freak out any passengers and probably even some pilots, too. It's an incredibly complicated thing to land an airplane here. One false move and things may not turn out so well for the folks on board. On their way to the landing strip, pilots absolutely must make an incredibly sharp turn into the valley before landing, and it's said that the whole experience isn't all that different from landing on an aircraft carrier. And that's not something that most pilots will ever have to do. The Tocantin Airport is nice and high up there, making for some serious gusts of wind and poor weather conditions most of the time, only adding to the frustration of the pilots going in for a safe landing. And if for some reason the plane does overshoot the landing, well, then everyone is headed straight into the face of a mountain. Number 13. Paro Airport Bhutan is a country in Southeast Asia found near the Himalayas and boasts one scary airport. It's so tough to land in the Paro Airport, in fact, that there are only 17 pilots in the world that are qualified to do so. This means it's going to be tough getting there. That's because the 6,500-foot runway is surrounded by 18,000-foot mountain peaks, where one false move means one big boom. And because the location is so precarious, departures and arrivals can only happen during the daytime. The Paro Airport is also pretty well hidden by the surrounding mountains, and by the time the pilots do actually see it with their own eyes, they are just moments away from being too late. And even to make it to the runway in one piece, the pilots need to fly between the mountain peaks at a 45-degree angle before making their dramatic landing. And even the best pilots are still going to have to fly dangerously close to the homes that dot the mountaintops. This may be one flight where it's not crazy to clap when you've landed safely. Number 12. Saba Airport The island of Saba in the Dutch Caribbean is the original inspiration for the old King Kong movie, so having an airport there has to be just as scary as the creature itself. The Saba Airport has one of the shortest runways in the world, coming in at only 1,300 feet long. So if you've just started, it may be best to sit this one out. The terrain of Saba already is pretty jagged and perilous, so the Saba Airport's no exception. And to hit the runway perfectly, pilots are also going to have to make an incredibly sharp bank left and then immediately go in for the landing. There is zero room for error in this one. But if it all sounds a little too crazy, fear not, because you can easily take the ferry from the neighboring island of St. Martin. Number 11. Courchevel International Airport France is known for good food, great wine, and of course, gorgeous locales. But it's easy to forget about the incredibly high snow-covered peaks. And if you're looking for an adventure in skiing, then look no further than the Courchevel International Airport in France. The runway is pretty short, with just 1,700 feet in length, but to make it that far, the airplane is still going to have to make a pretty steep climb if the pilots can even make it through the deep valleys. And this is another airport with such a dangerous landing that only specially certified pilots are allowed to even attempt a landing there. 
And there are no second chances at Courchevel International, so you either get it right the first time or not at all. It also runs on a pretty serious slope with a steep gradient of 18.5%, so you better hold on to your lunch if you plan on making a stop here. And to make matters even worse, for some strange reason the airport doesn't offer any lights or instrument aid, so good luck if you're trying to make it here during some bad weather, because it's going to be actually impossible. Number 10. McMurdo Station Do you know all of those Arctic research stations? Well, how do you think scientists got there? Yep, a lot of the time they fly there, which means there needs to be a runway to accommodate the airplane. The McMurdo Station in Antarctica is an ice runway built on bare volcanic rock of the Hut Point Peninsula on Ross Island. It's made completely out of ice. But that's not to say that there's a cold lake beneath the surface. No, this ice is actually made from four inches of tightly compacted snow. It's a unique way to make a perfect use of the natural surroundings. The ice runway at McMurdo Station is used by the U.S. Antarctic program through the summer season, and it's the only main airport on the entire continent. So if you're flying to Antarctica, there's a pretty good chance that landing here is inescapable. And things get even tougher during the Arctic winters when the area is dark for a full 24 hours a day. The runway doesn't offer the pilots any lights either, so both during the dark days and the serious whiteouts, pilots are going to have to land blind. But don't worry, because they all undergo special training before even attempting to come here. Number 9. Princess Juliana International Airport on the island of St. Martin is the Mahu Public Beach. It offers white sandy beaches, gorgeous crystal clear water, and some serious Instagram shots. But it's also located right at the end of the runway of the Princess Juliana Airport. So don't be alarmed if you're swooped up by a massive gust of wind caused by an airplane coming in for a landing. And not to mention the deafening sound it brings with it to wake you up in the middle of your sun-filled nap. The airport boasts a long runway coming in at about 7,100 feet but the planes have to reach an extremely low altitude in order to hit it just right. So if you see any photos of the beach or even manage to hang out on the shore, it looks like the airplane is just a few feet above the beachgoer's head. It's also a tough spot for pilots, too, because that means they're going to have to not only block out the hundreds of daily sunbathers in an attempt to stay focused on the oddly placed runway, but miss the beach entirely despite being so close to the ground. Number 8. Gisborne Airport on the outskirts of Gisborne in New Zealand is probably one of the most interesting airports in the world. It's not located near a heavily populated beach or tucked away in the crevices of a mountain. Instead, the Gisborne Airport shares a runway with a railway. But planes, trains, and automobiles aren't speeding down the runways side by side. No way. Here, the runway actually intersects with the National Railway Line. Gisborne isn't an incredibly popular airport, making the chances of an awful collision quite slim, but the possibility is still there if just one person behind the scenes makes a mistake. The Gisborne airport, though, has to be in constant contact with the folks working the railway stations, and the takeoff and landings are coordinated with an accurate, up-to-date train schedule to avoid any twisted metal mishaps. And so, while the operations of both the railway and runway may be dangerous, it does make a pretty cool and one-of-a-kind setup. Just make sure you're paying close attention. Number 7. The Neva River Changing things up a bit, this story takes place back in 1963. An airplane took off on an ill-fated flight from a Moscow airport. Nicknamed the Squeeze Tu-104, the Tupolev aircraft needed to make an emergency landing in the Neva River in what is now the city of St. Petersburg. So what exactly happened? Almost immediately after takeoff, the airplane encountered severe technical issues, and the landing gear was stuck at the halfway point and unable to fully retract. Pilots requested they turn back to their original airport in Moscow, but permission was denied due to heavy fog in the area. Quickly running out of options, the pilots had to make the split-second decision. They could carry on an attempt to land on the unpaved road of a nearby airport, but the technical issues on board only escalated and the gauges stopped working. Needing to reduce the weight of the plane, the crew dumped most of the fuel, meaning the amount of time they could now spend in the air was limited, and true fear was starting to set in. When the engines finally died, the pilots made their way to the Neva River with a rough but successful landing. With the help of tugboats, the aircraft made it back to shore, and everyone on board walked away unscathed. The incident became known as the miracle on the Neva. Number 6. Madeira Airport this landing strip of the Madeira Airport is located between some pretty steep cliffs and the ocean. What were the engineers thinking when they built this is anybody's guess. 
but they also built a series of platforms on an artificial island to extend the runway because it was so short. The runway itself is held up by more than 180 sturdy columns, which are especially designed to withstand the shock during a landing. Here's another airport that only has a selected few pilots that are allowed to land their aircraft on. Actually, you can only become qualified after completing hours and hours of advanced training simulator sessions. But it's still a whole other ballgame when you're doing the real thing. The airport is tough to spot, so these top-notch pilots need to be able to locate specific landmarks while they approach the strip, and the fact that there's no instrument landing here isn't helping anyone out. Couple that with the area's strong winds and, again, the location between the mountains and ocean, and you've got a recipe for disaster if you're not careful. Number 5. Kongahas Airport Every pilot worth their salt can talk to you about the Kongahas Airport in Sao Paulo, Brazil. But that doesn't mean that they like flying into it. Unless they're a real thrill seeker or just plain crazy, the Kongahas Airport is a dangerously short runway, and the approach you have to make to get the passengers and crew safely on the ground is even more so. First off, the airport is right in the middle of a heavily built-up part of Sao Paulo, and will give the pilots the feeling that the belly of the plane is about to scratch one of the skyscrapers below while you're coming in for the landing. But once you make it past the high-rises, you get to deal with the tarmac below, which is said to be incredibly slippery. One false move and things will go pretty south pretty fast. In fact, the landing strip has a serious issue in the past, with more than one fatal crash occurring there. So whether you're a passenger or a pilot, it might be best to fly into a different airport when cruising over to Brazil. Number 4. Telluride Airport The honor of having the highest elevation for a commercial airport within the United States goes to the Telluride Regional Airport, and it makes it easily one of the most dangerous in the country as well. The runway is only a thousand feet long and is surrounded by steep cliffs on all sides, so if you come in too short, boom. If you come in too long, well, you get the idea. Everything about the landing at Telluride needs to be absolutely perfect. It may be a breathtaking locale, but only the most skilled pilots are invited to land and take off from here. The fun doesn't stop once you hit the runway either, because the pilots need to make sure that they stop the plane just in time before falling right off a cliff. But the catch here is that the Telluride Airport is only serviced by commuter airlines coming in from Denver, so most pilots are lucky enough to avoid the pitfalls of this landing strip. Number 3. Gibraltar International Airport Following up our previous entry with another strange design plan, or some would say flaw, is the Gibraltar International Airport. What makes this airport so strange and so unique, but also makes for a dangerous landing, is the fact that the runway intersects with Winston Churchill Avenue, which is a highway. It's not the best idea out there, but it is what it is. The runway itself is very long, but the traffic still exists. And not just a little bit, so the timing has to be just right. Whenever pilots take off or come in for a landing, the highway traffic needs to be stopped each and every time, which probably makes for some serious rush hour traffic. But it's in the winter when things really get tough, because the high winds coming off the mountains make the aircraft that much harder to control. And while there have been a handful of accidents since Gibraltar International Airport opened in 1939, surprisingly none of them involved an oncoming plane running into a car. Number 2. Barra Airport When you think about Scotland, beaches are definitely not the first thing that comes to your mind. But alas, there they are. But what about putting an airport on one? Sounds exotic, right? Well, it might be until you need to make a landing at Scotland's Barra Airport, only to have the tarmac be completely submerged by ocean water. The runways here are marked with wooden poles in the sand, but pilots can only land when the tides are out. The airport's schedule depends entirely on the ebbs and flows of the water in the bay, so if it's high tide and you're in the sky looking for a good place to land, sorry. There are just three runways at Barra Airport, and it's a pretty common occurrence for them to be under the waves. But luckily for pilots, Barra Airport sits on a remote island in the Scottish Highlands and serves just one route coming from Glasgow that arrives and departs just twice a day. Number 1. The Hudson River The final dangerous plane landing on our list is perhaps the most well-known. So well-known, in fact, that it became a Hollywood film. The miracle on the Hudson began one morning in 2009, as a U.S. Airways Airbus left from LaGuardia Airport in New York en route to North Carolina. Shortly after leaving the tarmac in New York, geese were sucked into the plane's engine, causing dual engine failure mid-flight. Air traffic control advised the pilots to turn back to LaGuardia for a safe landing, but the now-famous Captain Sullenberger told them it was too late for that. 
The next best thing they could do was make it for a nearby airport in New Jersey, but in reality the plane wouldn't make it there either, and Captain Sullenberger needed to land the plane now. He let air traffic control know where he would land the plane, in the Hudson River in the middle of a New York winter. The rest, as they say, is history, and local boats and ferries came to the passenger and crew's rescue once the plane landed on the water. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.